I've been a study a student of Ayurveda the last couple um, about a year and a half, and uh, I've encountered quite a few uh, conflicting information. Um, one of which I have a few on. I'll try and limit myself. Um, it's dairy product. Um, a lot of nutritionists, naturopathic doctors, hate dairy because it has ca casein, which is cancer promoting. And another argument is that um, we, most of us, actually lose um, enzyme to break down. Um, casein and lactose by the time we're four years old. So that's another reason to stay away from a dairy product. But ayurvedically, um, and I'm actually, um, when I had a, a, one of the lectures, um, this ayurvedic doctor in India, he actually puts all his cancer patients on milk only diet and it has excellent results. <laughs> <laughs> excellent results. Um, and I've actually shared this uh, information with um, my doctor, my naturopathic doctors, and they gave me this look of like, uh, uh, that's not what I'm seeing and that's not what I'm reading. Um, so if you could just shed some light on this issue, that would be great. Okay, you're back to the, you have a question and you would like a yes or no answer and I, <laughs> I refuse to give you a yes or no answer, but I have some educational information I'll share with you and then all of you can make up your mind where to go from that. And so. I'm going to do the pros and the cons of dairy, and uh, then we'll sort of go from there. There are some pros, so let's do the cons first. In, in this country, how is dairy produced, right? Cows are locked up in cement cells, many, many cows to a small area. They are not allowed to graze for the most part. They are fed a very unnatural diet to them. They are maintained on antibiotics, and there are sometimes the they put a little hormone patch on their ear of something called xeranol, which is a very potent estrogen to increase their milk production. So the quality of the dairy really matters. So it, when we're saying dairy, we have to really define what do we mean when we say dairy. If we're talking about commercially produced dairy, I would probably not recommend that for anybody. But if we're talking about really healthy dairy, when we mentioned about the happy cows uh, over the grass, enjoying the ocean breeze, then there might be, that might be a different kind of dairy, okay? That's variable number one, the quality of the dairy. Variable number two, let's do casein and lactose. Obviously, if you're lactose intolerant and you don't have the enzymes to digest dairy, or if you're insensitive to casein and you're eating a food that you have an allergy or an intolerance to, you're going to produce inflammation. So dairy is probably not a good choice in those situations. So we're, we're identifying who might be a good choice for dairy here. So we have the quality of dairy, and then we have the digestibility for the individual who's eating the dairy, right? Next issue is something called insulin-like growth factor number one. This is IGF-1. It's a, gr a growth promoter for many types of cancers, not brain tumors, but yes so far for prostate, uh, ovarian, endometrial, cervical, and breast cancer. There's some, oh, and thyroid. There's some fairly strong evidence, uh, maybe strongest in breast cancer, that IGF-1 is a, a very significant growth promoter for these cancers. So you don't want to be exposed to this. It's in dairy. And it's not only in conventionally raised commercial dairy, it's also in the organic dairy. IGF-1, yeah, it's not something that they're adding to the milk. It's something that <coughs> is naturally occurring. And it's, uh, it's a, a hormone that stimulates milk production for the animals as well. So over the decades, as the farmer, be he Mr. Organ organic Farmer and Ms. Organic Farmer, or the big commercial industry, they have selectively bred the cows that produce the most milk. And these are the animals that are highest in IGF-1. So the, there are some cancers, the ones I had just mentioned, that it might be wise to avoid dairy in those situations simply because of the exposure to IGF-1. Um, somebody who's really concerned about this, I had a client some many years ago who was a chef in Los Angeles, and she loved her dairy products. We measured her IGF-1 and her IGF-1 binding protein, and then she, you know, had a, l a little budget of dairy that she knew she was trying to keep her IGF-1 under a certain number, and we played with a little budget of dairy to keep her number under that, but that's a concern. There's also um, galactose is a milk sugar that's in dairy products that there seems to be a risk, and some studies have confirmed this, and one or two studies haven't, that um, the gynecologic cancers, ovarian, endometrial, cervical, 
uh, uterine cancers, the many women who have those cancers may miss the enzyme or not have the enzyme that breaks galactose down, and it's uh, very <laughs> inflammatory to the reproductive tract. So it might be a promoter for those particular cancers as well. So we've done some no-nos. Let's do some yes-yeses. There are some things in good, healthy dairy product that are somewhat difficult to find other places in the diet, and particularly conjugated linolenic acid, or CLA. If a cow is out on a pasture eating grass, the dairy products will be very rich in CLA. There are a lot of studies on CLA, particularly against breast cancer, but many other cancers as well, and it's difficult to find in other places in the, in the diet. If the cow is eating spring grass, which is the most nutritious, healthy grass of the year, there will be a lot of carotenoids, not only beta, but the others from that group, there's about 600 carotenoids, will be in that dairy product. And there will be tocotrienols, which are constituents in the vitamin E family, which are also very difficult to find in other places in the, in the diet. So <clears throat> if you have one of the cancers that we mentioned where IGF-1 and galactose, you know, the reproductive type cancers, it might be wise to avoid dairy in those situations. Or if you can't get access to or, or can't afford good pastured organic dairy, then you might avoid. Or if you can't digest, you might avoid. But if it's one of the other head and neck cancer or brain tumor or colon cancer, there's a lot of protective studies on colon cancer and dairy foods. In the epidemiologic literature, if you take large groups, thousands and thousands of patients, you see dairy foods are highly protective for colon cancer. So I think it's not about dairy is good for cancer or bad for cancer. It's teasing out in the literature what types of cancer might be beneficial for, um, what types of cancer it might be a liability for, and then work on an individual basis and see is this a person who, you know, is going to benefit from eating some dairy or maybe, you know, their inflammation is high <laughs> when they eat dairy or they don't have the enzymes that break it down.